first of all, my compliments for a great Congress, uh, Dr. Malcolm and Professor Hassan. Um, well, thanks for calling me to share my work on pain management. It is so, so important <laughs> to talk about pain management because that is what patient has come to you for. He doesn't know what is the actual problem inside, what is the pathology inside, is we diagnose and we treat it. But if we treat the pathology and we don't treat the symptom on the part of the patient, it is half done job. So let's mm -hmm. do a full job for the patient who has come to us for a relief. And that's the primary symptom of the patient many times. So there's no conflict of interest per se. Oh, you sort of, by the way. Now, pain, back pain has got many, many causes. Look at the MRI report. Multiple etiologies, multiple lesions. Mm -hmm. So each or one of them or many of them could be reason for pain generator. You have to find the pain generator and treat it. And it's not always a disc which is causing pain. We have to look at the other causes also, like posteriorly, facet, and SI. Anteriorly, it could be a disc disease. And uh, now, lately, vertebrogenic pain. It is more and more recognized, more and more authenticated, and more and more treated now. And we'll do something about it. We'll talk something about it. Well, there are times you have a multi-level disc disease. You know which one is the one which is really causing the problem. Here it is so obvious. But sometimes when you treat just this one, the other ones are still painful. This may be causing back pain, and this may be causing leg pain. And you have to treat the patient in total. It's a total pain relief you're looking at, and we have to treat them separately in their own right. We do discography at times for reason of knowing which one is which, and which really needs the right treatment, and what treatment, and how it is to be done. And that is to be looked at. This has become more and more imperative when we're doing a biologics lately. Believe me, five years down the line, there'll be less and less of surgeries and more and more biologics which will come in because we're going to prevent the disease. It's like cancer prevention versus cancer treatment. So we're going to prevent these diseases earlier than better and especially in younger age group with the very bad lifestyle we are like looking at these days. Yes, uh, well, intermission pain management can be pre-surgery or can be post-surgery also because as I mentioned earlier, there'll be a patient sitting in the clinic who either doesn't want a surgery at all or who has got a surgery done and still craving. So it's our duty to kind of uh, give a relief to this patient. Now, the point is, this gentleman has got an open surgery. You can see a big scar in there, and there is a micro dissectomy done, this endoscopy dissectomy done, done in there. Still look at the list and pain in the part of the patient, barely walking. This is when hard luck changes. Professor Kulkarni showed a very good, sorry, Ram, Ram Chandra showed a very good cases, list of cases yesterday. A single case, by the way, lined up with so many surgeries. But these are known things, facts. And let's believe it, let's do it, and let's kind of try to justify from our, we don't have some heavy soul with us, you know, that way. So spine injections, definitely it is a precursor or to the surgeries, but sometimes it falls after surgery, I mentioned, and is going more and more. Done effectively, they are a very, very good relief to the patient. A very good surgery has supplemented with a very good pain relief or uh, procedure is the 100% cure for so many patients. Some, another such patient, look at the multiple disc disease like this patient has got. They, they, you're not going to open all four of them, by the way. I, I know everybody, even Professor Malcolm and all will believe, not all it to be open. And another one, a patient who has got a black disc in there, it's obviously surgery is not the primary treatment for such patients, and a degenerative disc. Definitely, then we have other things coming in. This is the era of lesion invasiveness getting more and more acceptance amongst the patient population. And what I do, I'll give you one very nice trick there. I do five-in-one technique. I take my needle in, my radiofrequency needle in there, put in the interior disc first. I bend my needle by purpose and go in there, do my discography, be it with the eye, be it with the LA with steroid, or be with the PRP later on for a therapeutic. But it becomes therapeutic thereafter, or methylene blue, or ozone. I've done thousands of ozone in my times. But lately, less and less of them. PRP is more rampant now. And then I come back, turn my needle back in there in the posterior annulus there and do my RF annular denervation, which is an important ingredient of all disc procedures to be done if you're not handle the annular pain. Disc is not painful structure. The pain is coming either from the annulus or from the body. So that is to be realized. And then when I come out, I'm in the lateral lysis. In my lateral lysis, I do my lateral lysis procedure, be a neuroplasty, be it just block in there. Come out, if the patient has got a facet pathology in there, I take my needle, direct my, redirect my needle, bend needle into the facet joint, or do a facet denervation, facet RF. So this is five in one, a combo total relief for patient. And this is a patient has got a multi-disc disease. And they don't merit surgery per se. At least what you can do is you can always do a PRP or biologics. People are coming with the stem cells now. This is a very good technique now. They have a machine lately. 
which where they take the blood from the uh, from there and uh, take some stem cells out, small stem cells out. Rest of the blood is pulled back into this, like a dialysis, pulled back into the body, and only the cells are taken out, and those cells are used. Initially, they increase the number of cells by some methods, and those cells are used. So be ready with all this because I've been to Cuba, Havana, and I saw all this uh, right there, and they're using it. Uh, yes, uh, well, if not taken care, we had ozone, we have anulplasy or bicoplasy, and we have obviously the manual or mechanical decompression of the disc fragments or fragmentectomy for the matter, and obviously epidureoscopy is there. Well, hold the culprit from the neck. Large base disc, there's no way this can be better treated than a disectomy or endoscopic disectomy, and you have a big fragment, nothing else would work in such patient, so this is what is required in such patient and a 100% pain relief, obviously obviously, and then you address the, see what happens when you remove a big fragment, there's going to be a disc collapse syndrome. So patient will have a secondary first arthropathy, must address that. Anulplasty is a must, platelet reach plug is there, we are making it all patients lately, we, we, we might use with the endoscope or we do a PRP through a needle. When I do a needle procedure, I use PRP. When I do a scope procedure, I do with the uh, plug. Now, well, this is, uh, a flapping route is good, always you want to see a dura flapping, but sometimes there are bigger holes, which is a reason of concern for pain or recurrence, and that is, I've devised a method there, I do a disc mesh plasty, I put my mesh in there, I fix it with the tucker, and uh, my patients are doing very, very well, no recurrence I've seen, and obviously the pain is reduced, and I'm more confident and I tell patients to walk around the very next week, because that always keeps the mesh in place. Well, we talk about the uh, endolor pain right there, and we talk about the RF and uh, RF denervation, but there is a bigger component with the modic changes which is coming in chronic disease, and that is the, uh, the sinovertebral nerve which is coming, basic vertebral nerve which is coming in there and supplying the end plates, and that's the reason for the discogenic pain. There are very, very good articles which have shown the chronic disease has got a more new innervations and more of the end plate changes coming in there and the inflammation, other things, and they're really bothering, and there are pro-inflammatory uh, mediators already there, and they're bothering these patients. And obviously, patient is in pain. So uh, it is realized in such patients, the interior disc uh, problem or interior column pain is more common than the posterior column, which is the face that we're talking otherwise. But, and this is less often seen. So I think probably that needs more care, and that's what American Society of Pain and Neurosciences are doing it. They're doing a sinovertebral denervation or basic vertebral denervation with the RF uh, technique. And this is intracept procedure. Very good procedure, very relieving, and shown a very, very good results. We just have to do like a transparticular like vertiplasty, put in those probes there, hard probes there, make space, and do denervation. And that is at the end of the procedure. This is how the lesions look like. These are the lesions which you look in the multiple. You can do it at multiple level, especially when the modic one and two changes. This is very, very helpful for those modic changes, which is painful, by the way. And they, this is the, uh, the amount of relief they are getting. So almost, you see, almost 90% patients get a relief between uh, 50 to 100%. 72.6% uh, they mentioned is more than that now. And 26% has got 100% relief in such patients, which we can't address otherwise. Do any disc procedures, these pains are not going to be addressed. And this is their protocol, best practices now already is uh, put in, formulated, and they are using it. When there are disc pain, especially the annular pain, we do annular denervation, I told you. But anterior disc pain is more of a sympathetic mediated. Now, that's why it's a vague, it's not localized. So we do a uh, RF um, denervation of the remi complicantes, or sometimes we go anteriorly and do a simple lumbar me for the anterior discal pain. Now, new things which is there, new kit in the block, which has been rampant now, and the one which was there already, there was a spinal cord stimulator for the radicular pain, which is more to do with the lead inside the spinal canal and for sensory fibers. Lately, what has come in is the reactive aid, which is the mechanical pain of the muscle mechanical pain, which is restorative for the motor fibers and leads are outside the canal. And they're placed next to the medial uh, branches of the uh, multifacetous muscle supplies. And this kind of give a stimulus to the multifacetous muscle. 30 minutes, twice a day, is good, it, this kind of takes care of all this pain, and this is a core strength thing, you can say. And now it's a counter of what we have been doing. We're doing a denervation. Now we are doing a re-innervation or muscle re reinforcement. And this is how the leads are placed. You can see the leads are placed, the spinal cord symmetry lead again, and they're well anchored in there with these tanks, and the leads are there, and they're doing stimulation, and they found a very good result. So the RF of the facet is going away because we're doing reinforce, like knee. We do a quads exercises. Same thing is happening with the multifidus reinforcement. 
Well, there are patients who have been beautifully surgeried, six open surgeries, six procedures, pain procedures, still in pain, and a misplaced screw. One can see a misplaced screw in there. So we're doing a spinal cord simulators there. And this is what the patient is on the table. You do it under this. And uh, the, 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 we want to see a happy patient at the end of the procedure. That's what you and me, everybody look for. DRG has come in there already, which is more for focal pain or monoradicular pain, especially for post surgical scenarios. If there is a disc collapse syndrome which is coming, vertiflex, they're doing it. We are not doing that often. And we're doing a reinforcement or a posterior column augmentation with the opening of the neural foramina. And that takes care of the pain problem. These are hybrid procedures, CM versus CM vis a vis or CM with addition to the ultrasound. We have a hybrid OT lately. We're not doing only CM guided, we radiation is killing to us also. And that is what you, are, you can do all facet joint blocks, you can do just with the ultrasound. It's very, very effective, very nicely done. But if it comes to RF, we have, I have to write needle placement at right places. Very, very helpful in post surgical scenario because there's a transition syndrome. We have fixed all this, there's a more load shifting onto the adjacent level, whatever adjacent disc disease we talk. We don't not talk about adjacent facet syndrome. So these are adjacent facet disease which comes in and we have to address that. And that is our lead has to be placed next to the median branch. You can see the lateral and the inter intermediate branch. The medial branch which is supplying the facet joint, two levels for a single level. We do a two denervations and there are bigger uh, lesions now with the cool RF as well as the very good technological makeup is there. I, somebody was asking me about the RF. This is the cool RF, machine is costly, probe is costly, but we have a tanks coming in with the same cost and it can be used with a conventional machine and it's a bigger lesion. So we are saving on cost with a better lesion. Same can be used for SI. We know we do lumbar work, but not to forget 15, 20% of patients who have SI pathology. We do intra-articular injection, diagnostic come therapeutic with steroids and then we go on with the radiofrequency ablation of these lesions. There may be a patient, 5% of them, a Bartolotti syndrome, more so symptomatic after the L5-S1 procedure. So we go and address the Bartolotti or transition vertebra. When there's pseudoarthrosis, if you don't read the pseudoarthrosis, patient can be a kind of a, for years to weather can be in pain. Obviously, neuroplasty is a golden procedure, post-surgery or pre-surgery for the matter. And we're doing with the uh, spring-loaded catheters, but they really don't do very great in the bad adhesions. There we are using balloon neuroplasty. This is my own procedure. I presented in the World Congress also in South Korea. And that is how I put all through, transforminal, cardal, via endoscope, through S1 foramina, and open up my places. This can take a pressure up to 30 atmosphere. We have to be more careful on not to cause injury. That's what you have to be smart at. Yes, epidioscopy is there, and it becomes therapeutic, diagnostic and therapeutic if you have a laser in place, and you can really break away those adhesions need be. I always say teaching is the best way of learning. More you teach, more you train yourself first. So it's such a nice thing and it's always good to share because after all you want to leave a happier world and for the more trained world. And that's what we do a, a live workshops on patients, by the way, this time is on the patients. I do live workshops. And well, you do your healing touch and keep gifting smiles all over as far as possible. These are a few patients. You, she, was, she was the foot drop, by the way. I've got a video of hers. Foot drop and she came totally recovered. Uh, interlaminar procedure on sir, this patient. Thank you. Your time is up, sir. Plus, Please. Last, sir. Finish, sir. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. And thank you, Professor Malcolm, for giving me time to share my work. Thank you, friends. Thank you, sir. Yours was a very informative talk. A lot of new technologies brought on the screen. And definitely chronic pain is something which many spine surgeons need to <coughs> learn and address. And uh, you spoke of many things that come in the, the realm of spine, and that is where I feel that the streams of spine, neuro, ortho, and even pain management merge. Their job, especially on the frontiers of pain, is excellent. Thank you so much for this. We'll move to the next talk.